Hi, this is Gene Birdsong, and welcome to today's Shipwreck Hunter Show. In this episode, we're going to talk about the Florida MR, a treasure ship that's still waiting discovery. You ask professional treasure hunters to name a list of top five lost shipwrecks, this shipwreck would be on all of their list. The ship was called the Flor de la Mar, or Flower of the Sea. Built in 1502 and weighing 400 tons, and made for traveling from Portugal to India and back, it was twice the size of other ships that had gone on this run. The floor was part of an era of exploration, colonization, and exploitation. Three masts, six sails, square rigged on the foremast and mainmast, and latine rigged on the mitzen mast, drove this tall, rounded hull through thousands of miles of ocean waters. Ships of this type opened the riches of distant countries far, far away to the European conquerors. The floor was something of a prototype for what would become the typical 16th century India now. The ship's experience with difficulties maneuvering also led to a changing of the route around Madagascar to go to India. Captains of these heavy loaded big ships were ordered to sail east of Madagascar rather than navigating the fast Mozambique Channel. The floor's service life had been expectantly long for a ship on the India run. Built for only three or four years of work, she lasted from 1502 to 1511. However, her design made her dangerously unseaworthy when fully loaded, and her service in various campaigns had necessitated many repairs. Eventually, the issues would be play a part in the floor sailing into history with what cl some claim is the largest naval treasure ever lost. In command of the floor was Alfonso de Albuquerque. He was known, depending on your perspective, as Alfonso the Great, Alfonso the Terrible, the Caesar of the East, and the Lion of the Sea. Alfonso was a Portuguese nobleman whose titles also included the Duke of Gao and the Governor of the Portuguese India. His successes and conquests were many, including these he had put the King of Cochin in power and built a fort in Cochin, now known as Western India, and established the foundation for Portugal's empire in the East. He also commanded a squadron of ships that sailed against the island of Ormuz in 1507, one of the chief centers of commerce in the east. He had brought Gao under Portuguese authority in 1510 and captured Malaga, one of the richest cities in the world, in 1511. His successful strategy of trying to close all the Indian Ocean Naval Passages imposed Portuguese power in a significant portion of Asia. It seems Alfonso did not believe in the expression, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Most of his riches were placed in one ship, the enormous treasure hold of the Flor de la Mar. As you might recall, the floor's design meant that it was dangerous and hard to maneuver when filled to capacity, as well as being, having been repaired numerous times. Despite the ship's unsafe condition, Albuquerque used it for his flagship and its large capacity to transport his display of Moroccan treasures. Also on board the ship was an impressive tribute from the King of Siam to the King of Portugal and all, all of Alfonso de Albuquerque's personal fortune. It was the largest treasure ever assembled by the Portuguese Navy and included 60 tons of gold from the house of the Sultan of Malacca. Also on board were 200 gem chests that were filled with diamonds, rubies, and emeralds. Accompanied by four other ships, the floor set sail for Portugal in November of 1511. Perhaps in a stroke of irony, after taking all of Malacca's riches, a violent storm blew up the Straits of Malacca. The Flor de la Mar was wrecked on the reefs near the Straits, just northeast of Sumatra. The ship broken in two, and many, many people were lost at sea. In addition, the treasure disappeared under the violent waves of the storm. Alfonso, however, was saved. He jumped into a lifeboat with five of his officers, leaving everybody else to die. Following successes in his other efforts, his detractors in the Portuguese court moved against him. They inspired King Manuel to replace Albuquerque with a personal enemy, Lopo Soares de Albuquerque. Alfonso de Albuquerque received this news while at sea and it was too much for him to bear. He died on board his ship on December 15, 1515. As you might expect, treasure seekers have searched for this exceptionally rich prize ever since the first gem-filled chest got wet. One treasure hunter, Sir Robert Marks, reportedly spent somewhere around $20 million trying to find the Florida Alabama. As far as we know, nobody's found it yet. And that concludes today's Shipwreck Hunter Show. And don't forget, go out and find some treasure. <laughs>